Hi, I'm Tom Stone with Thermal Care. Today, we're going to be reviewing the pre startup checklist that's provided by Thermal Care's aftermarket sales and service department when your equipment ships. So, you've received your new chiller or pumping system. The first thing to do is inspect it for damage and shipment. Then, what you'll want to do is to locate your packet of engineered drawings and manuals associated with the particular piece of equipment. That will provide the guidance you need to start the process of installing and then operating your system. We'll start with the top few sections of the checklist. At the very top here, you can see with the highlight denoting that we require a three week notice in order to get your date scheduled properly and ensure that we hit the date that you require. We also note the number of days that we require for notice of cancellation, which is currently seven days minimum notice. In the next section here is contact information, whether that's for the contractor installing the equipment or your plant manager or whomever would be the contact at your plant. The key piece to note in here is the model and serial number that we ask for. That's very important for our service team to be able to identify your specific piece of equipment and ensure there weren't any special design requirements or application requirements for the system. And then finally, this last section here at the top is just noting the documentation packet that I mentioned earlier. We have this on here to ensure that there's multiple times for you to find that information and make sure that you have reviewed it. The rest of this front page of this document, each of these sections shows an area that would pretty much apply to almost all systems. It includes your piping, so to have your piping installed, pressure tested, leak tested, uh, to ensure that your pumps are rotating the right way, uh, ensure that any strainers are clean, and that the system can actually run with a load. Then we have variable frequency drives. This one may not apply if you do not have any drives in your system, but this just ensures that they are powered and they're ready to go when we're there to start the system. Uh, pumps and electrical, that's to ensure that the pumps are rotating the right way, that the electrical phasing is correct, and that the system has actual power. Each of these bullets on here requires a yes, no, or not applicable check. And what that allows you to do is to run through your system to ensure that you're going to be properly set up when our technician arrives. If the system is not ready to be started up when our technician arrives, it's going to be a waste of both time and money for you as well as thermal care. Moving on to the second page, these are sections that are specific to each individual piece of equipment. And what I mean by that is the, really the type of chiller that the system is using. We have a condenser water piping section and then a remote air-cooled condenser piping section. Those are mutually exclusive. You cannot have both of those, and that really depicts whether your chiller is a water-cooled design or a remote air-cooled design, otherwise known as a split system. Each of these sections will take you through some of the key points that over the years we have noted as not necessarily the all-inclusive install guide, but the pitfalls and some of the things that we've encountered through the years that have caused delays. Um, and additionally, if these sections are not correct, it could require the technician to come back out for a second visit if the system is not ready. And finally, we're on the last page. In this page, there's a few sections that are specific to the system like primary, secondary, that's if you have multiple chillers that are going to be working together in a system operating as kind of like one unit. Uh, then water treatment, that's chemical uh, processing for the actual heat transfer medium, which is typically water or a water glycol mixture. Uh, and then internet connection. A lot of our equipment has remote diagnostics and remote monitoring capabilities. If that is something that your system requires, this is the section that you'll want to double check to make sure that we will have that access through your building's network. And then finally, we note a safety section here. And this is for you to instruct our technicians and our team what sort of safety equipment and PPE is required. So that way our tech is prepared when he arrives on site to start your system up and conduct training for your personnel. Lastly, we have an open comment section and that's for anything specific that you feel may be extra information that we need in order to help this process go more smoothly. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something.